George, thanks for joining me today, pal. How are you? What, what, what have you been up to since we last spoke back in April? I'm good, mate. Um, thanks. Yeah, just the uh, the usual stuff. Right, uh, you know, gigging, racing, recording. What about yourself? Yeah, just, uh, you know, having a few months off from the stresses of student life and it's good to be back, mate. <laughs> like I said to you off recording, you've brought me out of a bit of a journalism sabbatical, so really appreciate <laughs> it, mate. And I suppose... Yeah. The best sort of way to start is obviously your new single, Feel It, coming out on the 26th of uh, September. Is, is that correct? Yeah. Would you yeah. like to talk about it to the listeners? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 26th of September, out on, you know, all the usual like streaming stuff, Spotify, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, so first, you know, the last single came out in April, so we're doing another one now. A um, bit of... Uh, I know you've had a listen to it, get a bit of a yeah, preview, it's aren't you? Job. Yeah, yes, yeah, so it's a bit, you know, a bit of like a sort of taken der- derivative of a bit of like a 60s sort of blues riff kind of thing. Obviously, with all the sort of usual nods to sort of like, you know, the, the local life and, uh, you know, the existence that we've got, um, you know, a bit of a bit of a punky kind of production on it but you know with sort of them familiar Lancashire sort of uh, sort of moods really Would you say it's got anything different about it to the other records you've produced? Um, yeah I would I mean sort of the it, 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 you know the, there is differences in there but still with that familiarity I would say um, you know it's kind of the first time that really we've took on sort of that blend between sort of that that sort of bluesy riff with sort of the punkness of the the way the guitar is played and that sort of like downstroke heavy distorted sort of um the guitar licks and especially obviously I know you've listened to it um but you know Brad's guitar solo in there that sort of like really high pitched and aggressive um bended you know the high notes um and then sort of the shouty sort of vocal in the verses especially you talk about the punkness of the record there that's something i totally identify with as well the record seems to have a real umph and energy about it right from the off and what i did actually last time when we spoke is what goes into the process of like making a record in like the recording studio that fans might not particularly see or you know listeners for example um it will each each sort of song or record is different really um different processes different producers have different processes as well and sort of we um try to experience that as much as we can you know oops we just fucking fell over behind me then uh, <laughs> we try and sort of experience each different producers process and are open to a lot of things as well because obviously you know we want to learn as much as we can and get the most out of everything and with this one in particular um with the way that we tend to approach things as a general way we're always sort of well drilled before we go and rehearse uh, before we go and record sorry um you know we'd we'd been playing this song live for two or three months before we'd gone and recorded it and obviously we rehearse religiously, you know, multiple times a week, um, every week. And so we just basically make sure before we go in that we're all absolutely certain on what sort of parts, you know, we're, what we're doing. We're all individual parts, obviously, for example, you know, I, I'll be, um, I'll know exactly what I want to do in terms of like vocal wise, um, how I want to, how I want to sing it. <clears throat> obviously the inflections and what sort of like well, you know the, the what I'm actually singing in terms of the lyrics I'll obviously have that nailed down in terms of what I'm going to sing um Brad you know with his guitar work he he will know exactly what his his like sort of main hook is obviously in that's in that you've listened to it um there's this sort of the riff that portrays throughout the verse um, that's obviously the main hook, and then obviously he'll work on sort of his his solo stuff, and then the sort of the main thing that 
gets like experimental in the studio, I'd say is sort of like, you know, the guitar layers and stuff, extra um, little layers in terms of the backing vocals as well. And I know there's a, there's a tambourine that's played in there. I think um, Mark Gardner from Ride actually came into the studio and did oh, the backing vocals and a bit of tambourine as well. So we're all like, you know, just sort of all well drilled. I mean, <clears throat> um, I know Brad, uh, Brad wrote the lyrics on this this song, and so um, I like to make sure that like I understand where he's come from in the lyrics, and then so that I can sort of do him justice, sort of thing. It definitely seems like you know a collective process. Not that it wouldn't be anyway, because that's what bands are about. But have you ever been in a situation with this song or any other songs that you've done where you've been in the recording studio and just accidentally stumbled across something that sounds good? You mentioned there about adding the tambourine. Is something is done off the cuff just randomly in the uh, recording studio? Not just for this song, but any songs that you've done, really. Yeah, definitely. Um, to be fair, like um, there's there's been lots of things like... Um, the last single play part, uh, there's a little guitar um, intro sort of thing, um, like sort of like Johnny Moore-esque riff sort of thing that that's in at the start. Um, that was just done off the cuff in the studio. Um, and with this song, um, J, uh, like our producer, um, Vince, he added sort of the little synth line in there um, and just sort of said to us, like, I've done this, what do you think? And then we 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 were on board with it. That's sort of like sits in there, and then you can hear it at the very end of the track. It sort of plays out a bit. Um, and, yeah, like you said, the tambourine. Um, and we we, always, we had a bit of backing vocal on there anyway. Matt, Matt tends to do a bit of backing vocals. But then, again, sort of James just said, oh, Mark's been in and, and has laid down a little bit of backing as well. Um, so there is loads of things that happen off the cuff, or it could just be a case of like you hear something different when you're recording as to because obviously when you're playing the song live every night in rehearsal and also obviously on tour, um it can be difficult to hear something new sometimes. So it can sometimes take, you know, listening to it back to think, oh actually I, I want to do something different here. It might be a case of or oh, I'll sing it a bit different or the guitar is a bit different. So sometimes things just do fall out of the sky sort of thing. But um, as a general rule, we sort of know the, the the crux of the song, the foundations of the song, like we know what we're going to do when we go in. That's the beauty of a new record, isn't it? You get to try it out on, on the road and see what works and what doesn't. You mentioned there you've played it for the past couple of months. That's another question I really wanted to ask you about the process of going on tour as a band and, you know, or going to gigs up and down the country, not necessarily on tour, but I know you've been doing a lot of gigs up and down the country and got some in Glasgow soon. Can you talk about, like, the trials and tribulations of that and, you know, the process involved? You have your own band van or, you know, who who drives you and things like that and <laughs> some of the situations you may have been in, travelling to uh, the back end of nowhere, for example? Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, so obviously we do. We go in a van... Um, we're fortunate enough that work with um, obviously your local, so you'll know yeah. um, Intac um, Self Drive, the sort of like local van company, yeah, no, uh, van hire and stuff. They're they you know kind enough that to work with us and um, help us out with supplying vans. Um, so you know we tend to just pile all the stuff in the back of a of a van, and then we've got um, my dad normally drives for us, so he's like become sort of like a designated uh, tour driver who comes with us everywhere. Um, obviously, Sarah's one of us having to do it as well, especially after the gigs, you tend to want to have a few drinks and stuff. So, yeah, um, so yeah, he tends to drive. And, you know, it's, that that's one of my favourite things, really, about even just the, you know, gigging in general is just us, us lot being in, the, in a van normally, you know the journey sort of just like fly by even when we're going you know further afield because we're just it'll just be us like talking crap basically just having a laugh and messing about and, or talk, talking about the gig or on the way back you know we'll be might be laughing about something that happened in the gig or something someone said or whatever you know just or just generally taking the piss out of one another or <laughs> to and from the gig 
that's what it's about, really, as well. That's why I love, you know, this is not necessarily about football, but I love away days in football for that reason. Yeah, yeah. Do you think them sort of moments, you sort of pretty much answered the question, but do you think them sort of moments, you know, bring a band closer together? Yeah, definitely. I mean, because we've, <clears throat> especially us, like, I mean, with the amount of time we spend together, um, you know, we, we see each other more than we probably see, like, our families and stuff. So it's like you, you sort of do get that band of brothers, like, mentality of, you know, we're all we're all in it together, and also, yeah. you you sort of you you almost develop that sort of uh, connection where you don't even need to say something to to yeah one another. You know, we're, we're all sort of we're all on the same wavelength, like naturally. Bit of a random off the cuff question: Do you have a favourite service station you frequent, or any food that you like to take with you on the journey, or any tracks you like to listen to potentially? Um, well, we do have a bit like sort of. I know you're a Nando's man, aren't you? <laughs> oh well, I fuck it. I work, I work there, but I won't say I'm a. <laughs> won't say I'm a regular visitor. <laughs> uh, but the uh, what we tend to do is like there's a, a there's a brewery that's uh, about near 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 to me. Three uh, Bees Brewery, so like Blackburn Brewery. They brew like obviously their own ale, so we tend to go up there. Get a um, get a couple of get a couple of drinks for the road, and then um, obviously hit the road. Services wise, <laughs> I mean, there's not really one I'd say is particular. They all say, tend to look the same. Like you know, yeah. we'll, we'll <laughs> stop somewhere and we'll be like, I'm sure we've been here before, even though because yeah. you know it's all a travel lodge in a Burger King normally, isn't it? Um, although we did. We got a, we got accosted at one service station. Yeah. It would um we it was one it was like an absolute it was like a you know one of them like tiny ones it was off the road at the middle of nowhere. Yeah. It was like northeast way. I think we were playing in Newcastle, and um obviously been driving for a couple of hours and we had a couple of beers and you know what it's you know what it's like you're desperate desperate for for a way aren't you so and yeah. um, we were like oh we just have to nip on the back of this service station because there was no there was like one toilet and obviously it's busy because there's a lot of people there so we're like I'm just gonna have to nip around the back and as we're walking around the back the tannoy comes on and it's a boat that's like you can't piss around there lads yeah, <laughs> well, Phoenix Nights or something like yeah that. you're literally like Max <laughs> <laughs> your name's not down you're not coming in <laughs> so we had to then just jump back into but uh, jump back into the van <laughs> and just wait but it's in terms of like food and stuff like that it's normally just kebab at the end of the night standing mate love that yeah yeah <laughs> wait until the, after the gig because then you can you know scram proper you don't want to be going worst thing worst thing we have made the mistake before we went for a chinese once before we played and i think matt were like literally nearly throwing up on stage playing drums <laughs> yeah. that, that can never be advised hopefully as well um, one day, I don't know if you've done this already, so correct me if I'm wrong. Hopefully, I imagine the ambitions to play festivals abroad, like you know, the likes of Ben or other oh, yeah. you know, gigs abroad. Is that something you're looking to maybe explore in the future, potentially? Or well, you know, this caught a question, but you get what I mean. Yeah, no, well, to be honest, we've always said sort of when we were my first lads' holiday, the same, well, same with all of us. Uh, what me, Brad, and Joe basically, you know, we've been we've been mates since we were in college, um, and so me and Joe for our first ever lads' holiday when we were just I think Joe was seventeen, so I don't even think he was eighteen yet. Um, we went to Benicassim. That was our like first sort of like holiday, you know, not with their parents, and um, we went me, Brad, and Joe for so I think it was five years on the bounce. Uh, we went every year so that's always sort of been Benny Kassim's always been our sort of like dream gig really that we'd love to do uh, you know especially in terms of festivals I think that's one that we really want to tick off the bucket list so you know if we can do that one day that would definitely be a box ticked off for us I think. Do you know if you have any overseas listeners at all 
a bit you're aware of that. I think that'd be a cool thing to just cover one day. So yeah, like Buenos Aires with an illicit t shirt on or something like that. We do have a couple that sort of like comment on our stuff on Instagram and stuff sometimes. I I I think we have had one, we've had one from like Argentina. Um we've had we had someone comment from Russia the other day on one of the things. And uh <laughs> we've had I believe um, Joe looking at it, and you obviously because you can see sometimes where your Spotify listeners are. And there was like some, um, I can't remember exactly where it was, um, but it was like a small town in Germany. Was like after after sort of UK, there was this specific small town in Germany that was like our biggest like listener. So you know maybe maybe over there, find out where that is and book a gig there. Yeah, brilliant. That's quality when you can obviously like reach wider audience. But obviously, the bread, bread and butter stuff is also always if you can and find time to do your homecoming gigs. And that brings us on to the Electric Church, which hopefully I will be attending if I can get back from the FA level two in time because I'm looking forward to that. Uh, can you talk a bit about that uh, about that uh, gig on the first of October and you know how it came about? Because I know you played there before, aren't you? On a- yeah, yeah. So. It- you know that's one that really i mean we i know we bu- we booked it a few months ago and it's sort of been one of them where it's crept up on us obviously it's only a couple of weeks away now because it's been one of them where obviously we sold we were fortunate enough we sold it out in less than 48 hours um and we didn't really do any promo for it or anything we'd sort of had all that lined up but then when it sold out you know didn't really have to do anything for it obviously yeah Yeah. um so that's one we're massively excited for obviously you know hometown crowd obviously we know like you said it's the bread and butter really it's you know majority of our fans um especially in blackburn you know have supported us sort of since day one really um i know and I don't know that people are sort of coming from further afield for it as well. I mean, obviously you're you're local anyway. You're Burnley. I know that. Uh, I know there's a couple of like a couple of you and your a couple of your mates coming over, and uh, I know there's people coming from all over where we have stopped on this last tour that are coming down. Um, but you know, <clears throat> Blackburn gigs for us are sort of always the most exciting because you can feel that buzz around like the town sort of thing, especially for us. Um, you know, we get people asking us about the gigs and stuff. And I know that Dam- Damien that runs the, the venue has had people asking, like, oh, can we get in? Can we get tickets? And it's like, no, it's completely sold out. You never think... know you're not coming in again, I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's we, to sell it out in advance as well, that far. I mean, it's a venue that we love, really, because... It's sort of where which is where we got signed. We got signed at Electric Church oh, to creation. Um, it's where Alan McGee saw us for the first time when Gary brought him down. Brilliant. And it's where we rehearsed for not for you know over, you know a year or two as well. And so we're good mates with Damien and um, the venue itself. I think I think genuinely, obviously, I'm, I I might be biased because you know I, I mates with Damien and the the we love the venue just because of like sort of sentimental reasons, but I genuinely do think it's probably one of the best venues in the country, small venues in terms of how it's run. I think Dame, Damien runs it really well. And also, you know, a sound system. I think you, you, you go to a lot of venues and especially smaller venues and you never really know what you're going to get in terms of, you know, the sound system or engineers and stuff, but you know, they've got really have that top quality gear there and that's why you know they've had some of the bands recently that come through i know working men's club played there probably 12 months ago now uh they had the Lathams play there they had yard act play there recently you know they've had you know really and they had johnny brown obviously me and you were there a few weeks ago yeah i'm gonna mention that um yeah like obviously i saw you at johnny brown and it has that gig had a very intimate feel to it in terms of Especially on Johnny Brown's solo career, I don't, I didn't know much about him until my mate Aiden, who you saw me there with him, Nathan Tommy, about him. My mate Nathan's <coughs> obsessed with he met, he met him after the gig and was absolutely buzzing and starstruck. But you know, them kind of intimate sort of gigs, 
it had that intimate feel to it, did Electric Church? And yeah. Is that what you think sort of like makes uh, smaller venues special? Because they're like, you're there and if you're there, you're not. And if you're not, you don't, you don't sort of think it's like a piece of history. Yeah. The Sex Pistols, when they played their first gig, I apologies, can't remember where it was. You know, things like things like that, but I've seen it on 24-hour party people. And just them small venues where you're witnessing you know, pieces of history and stuff. Yeah, and like, like you said, it's a bit of a, if, if it's one of them where you want to be in at the ground up sort of thing. So, you know, people could come to smaller venues and see, uh, you know, for example, like the Lathams played the Electric Church a few months ago now, and wow. it's like now they're on tour with the Killers, you know, <laughs> doing like stadiums and stuff. So <clears throat> it is like sort of like a badge of honour to say, oh, I've seen such and such a band play when there was only 100 people there or 200 people um and there is that intimate feel of you if you're you you know you, you're right next to the the band that's playing or if you know we're, we're right next to the crowd obviously you can see everyone in the crowd yeah. and there is that intimate feel and also like you said with you know johnny hanging around after the gig and stuff like that that's what we'll be doing after the gig in blackburn you know we'll be be a bit of an after party sort of thing we'll be hanging around and having a few drinks and that's one thing that we love as well is just like chatting people after the gigs um you know because you get to meet people that have you know are fans of the music and stuff and sort of like you don't realize sometimes um obviously when, when we're making the music and stuff we make it with the intention of you you know having an effect on someone you know just in terms of you know they might it might just be that they've come down and had a good night or the music might hit them on a deeper level and they might really you know respond or relate to something in in the music so it's always nice when you chat to someone after the gig and they can tell you a bit of their story and how you've related to them I think it's real and authentic really and that's what music is about and that's what proper you know northern working class people about real and authentic and that's really what I want this podcast to be and I sort of yeah, yeah. had a few like months away because I sort of felt like that I wasn't able to get that side of myself out but you know going forward like that's what I want to you know talk to real open and all these proper people and that's certainly what you, you guys are I'm not saying that no, but nobody is but I don't necessarily be, want to be this uh, you know professional journalists I just want to speak to people where it's at you know in the northern sort of side of things and just working class genuine good people so thanks for coming on George and no no and I think it's like that, that what you're doing in terms of like podcasts as well is like a good <clears throat> it's a good sort of like forum to do it in because if you you like say you talk you want to talk to you know people that are like real and honest and open I think this a way where you have a bit more of an open conversation is a lot better way to do things than sort of like a bit more of a rigid interview sort of thing. Not saying that uh, anyone that I've interviewed is that way, but because they're not, but no, they, yeah. uh, I want to go on my own. I, I don't think I have any desire to say work for the BBC, like a professional sort of environment. I just want to, you know, have, have a great chat. So, I've, and that's certainly what we've had today, George. Have you sir, have you got any uh, party messages or any plans you want to disclose for any future up and coming songs or any plans for 2023 if you haven't got any songs coming up for the remainder of the year? Yeah, so obviously we've got Feel It coming out on the 26th of September. Um, and in terms of gigs, you know, we've got uh, Nottingham on the 8th of October, yeah. London, or debut in London on the 14th of October, um, Glasgow, 7th of December, tickets, I think we've done like 50% of tickets there, so... Um, get on them quick because they're going to sell out and um, obviously Blackburn massively looking forward to that coming back to Blackburn first headline Blackburn gig since 2019 so three years in the making um, and it's going to be like one you know one hell of a night really um, more music you know we've been in the studio again recently there's more music coming so sit tight and we'll be doing some more big gigs before the end of the year and then hopefully more going into the next year as well. Looking forward to that gig, George, if I, if I, if I can get to it, which I really hope I do. I certainly will be leaving my BFC bag at the door, though. I won't be, 
<laughs> you know, yeah. we're crossing enemy lines like that, mate. You know, yeah, <laughs> no, I'm yeah. Excited, looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then we don't see you then. Might see you November 12th. Yeah, looking forward to that bit. It's going to be good. Uh, hopefully the best team win on the day, either way for one of us. Cheers, <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, whatever happens, there'll be time to make up for it. 100%. Nice one. Cheers, mate. Yeah, cheers, mate.